Hi, I'm Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today I'm going to show you how I went about calculating form the amount of binding I need for my Olivia quilt and I'm also going to show you what my granddaughter and I did with the leftover blocks. So stay tuned. This is my Olivia quilt and today I want to show you how I went about measuring for the binding to find out how much I need. I normally do it one of two ways. The first way is I take this 120 inch um, measuring tape. It's a fiberglass one, so it's real flexible. And I will lay it on one side. And here I go. And I will actually clip it right to, using a wonder clip, clip it right to the quilt itself. So I'll clip that so that it will hold it. I will take this measuring tape, and this is the best measuring tape around. It is a self-lock measuring tape. So when I extend it, it actually just stays out. So what I can do, so what I can do is just lay it down on the quilt here, and I'll just walk it down until I get to the point that I'm there. And again, I'm 102 and a half. This is a great measuring tape because what happens with it is it doesn't fold up until you push the button to tell it to fold up. So I'm 102 and a half by, I'm just gonna flip this around. And it obviously is harder if you don't have as much space to use that um, self-lock measuring tape. I know I'm pretty blessed to have this to lay it across. But what I would do, um, if you're going to use the fiberglass one, I'd grab your wonder clips and just do it on an end instead of in the middle. And that will still give you the size that you need. And then my width of the quilt is, let's see, here we go. The width of my quilt ended up being 94 and a half inches. Okay, so now we're going to move on over to the cutting or the um, sewing table, and I'll do the rest of the math with you. So we've got 102.5 times 2 for our two sides, the lengthwise. So that's 205. And then we've got 94.5 times 2. And that gives us 189. So our grand total is 394 inches all the way around. So the next step is we take our 394 and we divide that by, let's say, 40 because really that's the average of the width of a piece of fabric. So 394, it's telling me it's 9.85. So we need almost 10 strips if we are doing it 40 inches wide. Well, I always like to at least add one more 40 inch strip because of the fact of when I put my bindings together I always do a bias sewn attachment the bias and I'll link um, one of my tutorials for making binding in the show notes below so I need 9.85 so I'm going to round that up to actually 11 40 inch strips. So now we're only dealing with half inch strips, which means we're going to have a whole lot more of those seams coming together. So normally what you would do is just go 11 times 2 because our strips are only half the width. That's 22. But I am concerned about the fact that we've got so many bias angles on this when we go to put the binding together. 
So I would add at least another eight to mine, and mine's the queen size, I believe. So I'm going to do at least 30 strips from my Olivia's Fabric Original Cut. So that's what I'm doing with that. Next, I'd like to show you what we decided to do with the leftover fabrics that I have from my Olivia's quilt. My granddaughter saw those and just decided she had an idea of what to do with them. So stay tuned and I'll show you what we did. Hi, my name is Lyon and I'm the granddaughter of Margaret who runs Miss Marker's Quilts. And I'm making my first quilt and I wanted to share it all with you today. So I, I got inspired by my grandma because she's so nice and she does a lot of great quilts. And I wanted to do something like it. So I'm making my very first stroke quilt. And you, as you can see, I've used a lot of scraps from Olivia's quilt. And my grandma thought that I would do something with them. And I am. I'm really excited to sew this with you guys. And talk about it with you. So, I really, as you all know, kids are a big fan of Christmas, and I'm a huge fan. I love being with my family, so I chose a couple of Christmas patterns, like this red dotted one. It, I like red sometimes and how it looks with white, so I did that, and the Santa one, the Santa envelope ones, and I like writing to Santa, so I chose that one. And this penguin one, which I just thought it was cute. <laughs> and this dotted one, I just found it in the quilt, in the Christmas part. I don't actually know if it's Christmas, but I like all the colors, and I'm a big fan of black, so I chose that one. And this one, because it kind of looks like flowers, and my mom's a really good garden. And I don't know if you can see it, but I have a couple of striped ones. And those ones are just because I like purple. Mm -hmm. We're going to start by straightening it, and we're going to pin it. So let's line up our quarters. Let's get a couple pins. And like let's three, right? Yep, three would be a good number, I think. Nice pinning job. Thanks. Okay, now let's lay it flat because laying it on a surface is usually a little bit easier. Let's slow down. We're getting going too fast. Okay. Okay. So let's lay it down. Wait a minute. Are we lined up here? No. So we got to kind of scooch it. I think that's a really important technical technical term. What do you think? Yeah. Okay, we'll pin here first. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to take it down and then bring it up, holding the fabric. There. Good job. Yep. Now we're going to do this one. Okay. Okay. All right. You're ready, Freddie. Yep. <laughs> Put our pins down. And remember, this is your quarter inch foot, all right? Okay. And you're going to line your fabric up so that it's right there. And when it there. gets near here, I'm going to take the pin out. That's right, you are. Or are you going to do that? I'm going to stop the machine because I'm going to operate the presser foot and you're going to operate the fabric. Okay. So you're lining it up. See how you see right here? You should be right in front of the machine, centered in it. You ready? Mm hmm Okay, here we go. You ready? Yeah. You're going to take that pin out? Yeah. Okay, put it right here on your pin cushion. All right, here we go. You're coming up to a seam. Yep, here we go. Hey, I can do it. Yes, you can. Okay, now we're going to get this next one ready. Ready? Let's just twirl a little bit and let's get your next block ready. Okay. I'm going to trim this thread off of this one. You're not going to take this one out yet. 
Okay? Yeah. We're going to just keep right on sewing. But we got to get this block ready now to go up. Okay. All right. I hope you enjoyed watching how I calculate out to make my binding. And I hope you enjoyed seeing what my granddaughter and I are doing with my leftover blocks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.